and uh, we're we're studying about in his image and be, becoming uh, knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Uh, you know, there's three things that I want you to consider tonight as we study this about who we are in Christ Jesus. One is authority, one is power, and one is purpose. Those three things I want us to to discuss and look at the scriptures, and and then I want you to to receive this word tonight so that we can apply it to ourselves and that we can walk like he walks hallelujah you know it says in in the book of first john um it, it says in first john in chapter 4 verse 17 that as he is so are we in the earth now that is very powerful right there as he is, so are we in this earth. That's who he wants each one of us to be. That's who he wants George to be. That's who he wants Joy to be. That's who he wants Mary to be. Uh, and Jen and Jenny and Freddie and myself. And, and he wants us to be like he is in this earth so that we can be light, so that we can be the salt of the earth. You know, um, my son-in-law, uh, Brandon, uh, my daughter's husband, he was not brought up in, in church and he does not have any religious thinking in him, but he is a Christian. He is born again and, but he is, he's, he doesn't know the all of the scriptures and the other day they were in line to get a, a chicken sandwich and he looked at her and he said to her or he asked her are you the salt of the earth and she looked at him and she said where did that come from and uh and he said i don't know he didn't even know where the scripture was and but he said that just came to me to ask you, are you the salt of the earth? And uh, and Amy said she just laughed and laughed and laughed. But uh, knowing that that was that was from the Lord, and the Lord was was speaking to her uh, through Him, and uh, and so, but we are we are the salt of the earth, and we are the light of the world uh, because of Jesus inside of us. Hallelujah! And the more Jesus you have. The more words you have in you, then you're going to have more authority. You're going to have more power and you're going to fulfill your purpose. Hallelujah. And so those are the three things we want to talk about today. And um, I think about where does authority comes from? Where does it come from? And I, this is what this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Authority comes from sonship from knowing that you are one of God's sons. You are not the son. Jesus Christ is the son of God, but you are one of his sons. So authority comes from sonship. Power comes from the Holy Spirit. So the more you pray in the spirit, the more you are spiritual in your thinking and your doing, the more power you're going to operate in. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I got excited when the Lord gave me this message and I've been meditating on it. And I've been thinking on it and, and I want it to go deep inside of me and I want it to go deep inside of each one of you. Hallelujah. Uh, because you're growing in the Lord and you're maturing in the Lord and you're doing mighty things for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So authority comes from sonship. Power comes from the Holy Spirit and purpose comes from doing the will of God. Hallelujah. So in 1 Peter 1, 4, it says that we are to be partakers of his divine nature. That's what it says, that we are to be partakers. We are to 
participate, if you will. We are to take on the nature of God. The nature of God is love. Hallelujah. He is love. God is love and love is God. And so we are to take on those that, that divine nature. Well, divine nature means it means take on his love. Hallelujah. Operate in his love. Pursue, pursue that. He is uh, if the Holy Spirit is a spirit of peace. Hallelujah. And also we're to take on that mercy. If you're not merciful, then you will not receive mercy. Ooh, praise the name of Jesus. So, so all of those things, though, the nature of God, we're to take on the nature of God and we are to participate with him in, in whatever he's doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, as we are partakers of that divine nature, then we're going to begin to operate with more authority and more power, and more purpose, we're going to have focus in our lives. You know, I, I talk with people all the time, and, and they call, and they call for prayer. They call uh, just to be encouraged, and and I, when I talk with them, I can, I can see exactly where they are in, in the Lord, and, and so our words are very powerful and our confession, whatever we're saying out of our mouth needs to be the word of God. And um, so let's talk about authority first. And if you, if we turn to Luke 10, 19, and I know that, you know, brother Fred can just quote these out of his, out of his uh, memory. And, um, but let's look at Luke 10, 19. One of my favorite scriptures, which says, Behold, I give unto you power. And I'm reading from the King James. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, these are Jesus's word. And whatever Jesus spoke, came to pass and so when he's speaking this to you tonight right now he's speaking it to me right now i have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you and i thank the lord for that but are we are we receiving that are we acting on that? When the enemy comes with an attack on our bodies, uh, do we remember this scripture that we have power over that? We have authority over that. Remember, we have authority over everything on the earth. That's what he says in Genesis chapter one. Because we're made in his image, Hallelujah. we have that authority. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, the doctors will try to take it from us. Sometimes our family will try to take it from us. Sometimes our the people that we work with in the, in the marketplace will try to take that away from us. But it says, let every man be li a liar, but let God be the truth. And God is the truth. And this is what he says. I've given you the authority to speak to those things that are coming against you in, in your finances, in the marriage, in the with your family, uh, whatever it might be, in your body, in your mind. I've given you the authority to speak to it. Hallelujah. And it will not harm you any longer. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, Brother Fred and I have been, we pray before we go to sleep every single night. And we pray, and, and he's already given uh, a message on this for all of us, that we bind up those demonic forces uh, that would cause nightmares or that would cause any type of hindering force to, to come to us like a pain in the night. Uh, we, we, we bind those up in the name of Jesus, and we have the authority to do that. So 
Well, let's go back to uh, chapter nine because Jesus also, when he sent out his disciples in verse one, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all the devils. You hear that? It says all, A-L-L. -L, and to cure diseases. Hallelujah. In his image, in him, we have the authority over every single demonic force that's out there. And we have authority over every type of disease. Hallelujah. There were 39 stripes on the back of Jesus when he went to the cross. And every sickness or disease known to man will fall into one of those categories, one of those 39 categories. Isn't that interesting? Jesus took care of every single disease. He took care of arthritis. He took care of every cancer. He took care of every uh, every uh, uh, arthritis. He took care of diabetes. He took care of heart disease. He took care of <clears throat> every type of mental disease. He took care of it. Hallelujah. That's why he said on the cross, it's finished. I have done all the work. Jesus did all the work. And in him, and because we're made in his image, we have authority here on this earth. You know, when you get to heaven, you're not going to need to deal with a, uh, with, a, with a devil in your house or in your body or in your mind or in your workplace. Why? Because there's no devils in heaven. So where do you need that authority? You need it now. You need it here on this earth. You need to push back the enemy if it's if it's trying to invade your territory right now, today. If he's trying to, to bring depression, if he's trying to bring anxiety, if he's trying to bring worry, if he's trying to bring any type of muscle aches, if, he, if he's trying to to hurt you in any way, then you need to remember who you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going we're gonna to talk about King David before this is over with okay. tonight. Hallelujah. One of my favorite people in, in the word to talk about. Now, it also says in Revelation 1, 6, it says that we our kings and priests. He has made us kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. A king has authority. A king has power. And a king has a purpose. Hallelujah. That's who you are. That's who you are. Uh, Jenny, that's who you are. Lucy, that's who you are. Hallelujah. Uh, Mary, that's who you are. You are a king and a priest unto your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord told me this. By the spirit of the Lord. If you want to see your enemy defeated. Then you need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You need to operate in his authority. You need to operate in his power. You need to operate with purpose. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you for who we are in you. We thank you for your great power. Uh, hallelujah. And out of your belly, uh, the Holy Spirit would say, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. And it will flood over. It will overflow uh, the enemy. It will overthrow uh, any attack of the enemy. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. We have that power. In, in Romans chapter 8. <coughs> excuse me. Romans chapter 8. 
The Book of Romans is a great book to read uh, to find out who you are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 verse 37 says, Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And that's Jesus. Amen. You're more than a conqueror. Amen. What does that mean? More than a conqueror? How can you be more than a conqueror? Because you, you, you didn't conquer anything. Are you listening to me? You didn't conquer death, hell, and the grave. You didn't conquer cancer. You didn't conquer uh, any uh, any other kind of disease. But who did? Jesus Christ did. He's the conqueror. And then he gave it to you. He said, here, all authority and power is mine, and I'm going to give it over to you. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. That makes you more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. He made you more than a conqueror because of what he did. Hallelujah. He did it all. He finished the work at Calvary. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. And that makes us more than a conqueror. I'm still on authority right now. Uh, that authority. Authority means that you have the right. You have the right to speak the word. Yes, amen. Is that not good? Did you know that heathen and infidels and, and those that are that are not Christians, they don't have that right. They don't have the right to speak the word of God. But we have that right amen. to speak the word. And to declare the word. And it shall be as we declare it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You can declare your sickness gone. You can declare uh, your body to be healed. You can declare your family uh, to come into the, the, the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whew. Glory, glory, glory. Now, let's go to power. It, it says that, remember, the power comes from the Holy Spirit. And it says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, verse 38, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Well, we are made in his image. He's anointing you tonight with more authority, Amen. more Amen. power, Amen. more focus, more purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. When we get finished tonight, you're going to say, yes, yes, I'm made in his image. Hallelujah. I'm just like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, a religious mindset, mindset will say, oh, no, you're not like Jesus. You're just. You're just one of his children. You're just in the family of God. You're not, you're not really just like him. But see, the word of God says that you are just like him. And who will we believe? And who will we believe? I love you. Will we believe the church group or will we believe the word of God? The you. word of God is the truth. And the truth shall set all of us free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Hallelujah. Where, where do you think God is right now? He's with us. He is with us. Hallelujah. He is in us. He is working through us. Amen. Oh, no, no. God's way up there in heaven somewhere sitting on his throne. No. He's in you. Hallelujah. You walk because of him. You can talk because of him. You have a, a clear mind because of him. You're breathing because of him. Amen. It's all because of him. Amen. 
And he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. Never, That's... never, never. Never, 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 never. All right, let's go to Acts 3. You know, I believe that the uh, the the church, the Acts church is coming forth in the name of Jesus, where we're going to see miracles, where we're going to see people get out of wheelchairs, where we're going to see uh, thousands of people come uh, to salvation Amen. and into the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that, that that what we see in the book of Acts did you know that the book of Acts does not have an amen at the end of the, at the book? Why? Because it's still going on. Hallelujah. It's still active. It's still going on. Yes. Amen. Oh, praise God. Uh, Acts chapter three, uh, verse 20. It says here that God is able. Let's see. Is it? Oh, it's Ephesians. Ephesians. I'm talking about Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. God is able to do exceeding above whatever you act, ask or think according to the power that works in you. Yes, that's right. Amen. That's Ephesians 3.20. Amen. So he's, he's only able to do what according to the power that works in you, that's energizing you. That's right. And and how much of the Holy Ghost do you have? If you want more, you can have more. Just ask for more. Lord, I ask for more yes, tonight. Amen. Amen. Ask for more of your Holy yes. Spirit. Hallelujah. More, 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 more. Amen. Because He's able to do mighty things through through us. Yes. When that power is there, see, he works through his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, the God on this earth right now. He is the comforter on this earth right now. He's the one that will bring you peace. Amen. He's the one that will bring uh, healing to your body. He's the one that will bring you encouragement. Uh, he's the one that will bring you hope. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But it says, God is able to do great and mighty things, even things that we can't even imagine, according to the power that works in us. Amen. And that's why it's so important to pray in your prayer language every single day. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I'll pray, pray in my, in, I'll pray in tongues when something bad starts happening and, and I need the Lord. No. You need to keep it built up on the inside of you. That's right. Keep that power built up. It's like a it's like your 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 battery needs to be charged up. Hallelujah. All the time. All the time. So that when you need to speak the word of God with power, then you will be able to do that. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then uh first John three. First John 3 says, um, in verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, or given us, that we should be called the sons of God. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Do you know who you are you. in Christ Jesus? I know who I am. I know that I'm one of his sons. I know that he's given me power. He's given me authority. And he's given me a purpose right. in life. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants for every one of us tonight. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to purpose. And this is... The will of the Father. And uh, let's go to First John. Well, we're right here. First John chapter 3. Uh, let's just go across the page. And it says, verse. Uh, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose. Oh, yeah. 
for this purpose. And you say, well, what purpose do I have? The, I'm fixing to tell you right here. If you're in him, then this, you have the same purpose. This purpose. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested. Yes. That the that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Now that's your purpose. Yes. Every single one of you, your purpose is to destroy the works of the devil. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. That might be sickness, disease, depression, anxiety, worry, doubt, unbelief, lack, whatever it might be from the enemy. Your purpose every single day is to destroy those works. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good, Jerry. That's very good. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. That's our purpose. You say, well, I don't know what my purpose is on the, on the earth. Well, just go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, and read it over and over and over again until you get it down deep inside of you that this is your purpose. Because why? Because you're in him. Yes, amen. You're in his image. Yes, amen. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. And when you do that, you'll have more authority, you'll have more power, and you'll have purpose in your life. I, I, I love this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and then in John, go back to St. John chapter uh, 4, verse 34. It says, Jesus said this out of his own mouth. Remember, we're, we're in his image. We are in him. And he says in verse 34 of John, John saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Hallelujah. Who, so, who said that? Jesus. Jesus said that my meat is to do the will of him, the father who sent me and to finish the father's work. Hallelujah. What's your purpose? Destroy the works of the devil. Do the father's will. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Romans 12, 1. What is our purpose? Here on this earth. I love this. And you, you know this scripture very well. I beseech you therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That you be. Uh, you present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable. Unto God. Which is your reasonable yes. service. Yes. Of worship. Amen. Well what's my purpose? Hallelujah. Destroy the works of the devil, do the will of the Father, and worship him. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship the yes, King Lord. of kings and yes. the Lord of lords. Yes. We worship you, Lord. Amen. We worship you. Hallelujah. Amen. We are made in his image, Amen. and therefore we will worship him. Amen. Praise, praise the name of Jesus. Now, I want to go to King David. And I'm bringing this to a conclusion here. But I'm in uh, 1 Samuel. How do you think David was able to kill Goliath the giant? A giant with a big army behind him. How do you think David was able to do that? Was it just a special uh, gift that he had or was it a special anointing? No. This is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Is that King David knew who he was yes, amen. in the Lord. Yes, amen. He knew who he was. He knew he had authority. Why did he know that? He worshiped the Lord all the time Amen. on his little rock watching over the sheep. He would get his little harp and 
and he would worship the Lord. Yes, amen. The whole book of Psalms are songs that he would sing to the Lord. We used to sing these with our children going up and down the road, wherever we were going. We would sing the Psalms because they, that's what they are. They're songs that David wrote. Amen. That the Lord gave him a new song and, and King David would sing it unto the Lord. Have you ever just walked around your house singing to the Lord? Well, somebody might think I'm crazy singing a new song to the Lord. But let the world think what they want to think about you. Because you're one of God's sons. And you have authority, power, and purpose. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And King David, let's just look at what he did, okay? He had authority. He had the right. He had the right. Uh, King Saul said, you know, you're going to be my champion. Go, you know. Go on out there and kill kill the giant for us. Because my people are afraid. My soldiers are afraid. And so King, <clears throat> King David had authority to go forth and to kill the giant. Amen. And now I want us to look. Just look what he did. He prepared. He prepared. He knew how to use a slingshot. And also he had killed the lion, remember? And he had killed the bear that were coming out after the sheep. So he already had the skills and the ability yes. to use that sling. So he prepared himself. And then he went down to the stream. And he was very uh, specific in particular, about the stones that he took out of the stream. That's right. That's right. They were smooth, not ragged, not rough, because those stones, if you put them in a sling and you try to shoot it, it could go to the left, it could go to the right, it could go up or down. But if you get a smooth stone, it will go directly to the target. Amen. Hallelujah. So King David used his authority. He used the authority that the father gave him. Yes, amen. And he was able to come against the, uh, the giant. Hallelujah. See, if you have a problem or if you have a situation, then you need to prepare yourself. You need to prepare yourself. That's right. 